Good evening, everyone. First, I'll start with, uh, uh, I'll make a motion to reconvene an open session at 7 o'clock. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Borget. Yes. Vice Chair Berg is absent this evening. Uh, Mrs. Capel is absent this evening as well. Mrs. Nadel. Yes. Mrs. Kibiscus. Yes. I'll make a motion to seal the closed session minutes as of the August 14, 2019 minutes. Call meeting. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Dr. McGee. Chairman Borget. Yes. Mrs. Nadel. Yes. Mrs. Kibiscus. Yes. Would you please stand with me and for a moment of silence and a pledge, please. <clears throat> Of the several 
artifacts that were housed in this room. In addition uh, to students, several scholars and researchers such as Richard Lane and Debbie Waldman from Brown University and Dr. Pierre Antille from the University of Ottawa in Canada as well as local researchers and writers such as Robert Burroughs who made good use of the extensive slide collection for his work on images of America highlighting the city of Pensacola. They're just examples of several scholars who made use of the resources of the Crowley Bacon Room. You yourself, Mr. Chairman, you the resources of the rooms and you were researching and writing the history of the former St. Mary's Parish, Powers of Faith and Family, back in 1990. When Sackett's St. Joseph's Parish also utilized many of the materials and the room for the publication of their history, A Community of Faith Alive, in 1978. In 1976, the Wasaket Room became a temporary studio for the writing and recording of the Bicentennial Minutes to commemorate the 200th anniversary of our nation's founding. These minutes were broadcast on both city radio stations throughout the year. In the late 1980s, to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the founding of the city of Woonsocket, the centennial history of Woonsocket was published. The late Marcel Ford, the city resident, was the editor, assisted by Mrs. Crowley Bacon, the former high school principal of Robert Lockheed. The Wonsaka Room again served as a valuable resource that helped in the publication of this work. Several prominent local residents, including longtime Wonsaka Historical Society President Phyllis Thomas, along with the late Ed David Lelay, Larry Bortles, and Nancy Hudson from the prominent family that originated the Wonsaka Carl, contributed to the subject. In 1994, Martin Crowley retired after serving the Wonsaka Education Department for 38 years, knowing that the foundation had been laid and designed for the Lusaka history course to continue for years to come. In late 1995, a proposal was made to rededicate the Lusaka Room to the two federal educators who had instituted the Lusaka history course, Martin Crowley and Raymond Bacon. Original plans for the ceremony were set for January of 1996. Unfortunately, Martin Crowley passed away just days before the planned ceremony, which was then rescheduled for St. Patrick's Day, Mr. Crowley's favorite holiday. A portrait of Ben Crowley and Bacon, sketched by local artist and fellow faculty member Wood Bigra, was unveiled and hung on one of the walls of the newly named Crowley Bacon Room. In addition, portraits of four Wonsaki high school principals, all in attendance that day, were unveiled and also hung in the Crowley Baker Room. They included Alvin Chipiak, George Warren, Ed Schmuel, Don Dumont, and John Cataco. Over 200 persons, including former students, faculty, city officials, and friends and family members, attended the dedication which was highlighted in the Wonsaki Call. I have a copy of that article right here. As the years went on, the local history class continued to be taught to Wonsaki High School students. Unfortunately, in the uh, mid-2000s, cutbacks forced the class to eventually be eliminated, but the Crowley Bacon Room continued to be utilized as a valuable resource for researchers and the public at large. Sadly, in June of this year, 2019, it was arbitrarily decided to eliminate the Crowley Bacon Room and to move its contents to the Woodstock Historical Society headquarters located in the garden level of the Museum of Broken Culture. No one was consulted, no one was notified, no one was asked about the decision. It was simply executed. This, I believe, was an insult to both the Crowley family and to Ray Bacon and his family as well. I know for a fact that both the Crowley and Bacon families were deeply hurt by this decision to eliminate the Crowley and Bacon room. I can only wonder if in the future a similar decision would be made to eliminate the name Frank Emerson McPhee, who is not his premier superintendent of schools, from the building that serves as the central office of the Wasaki Education Department, which is also ironically the name of the Wasaki High School Library. What institution would be next? Kevin Goldman School, named after one of the city's most eminent chief executives of the Savoy 
public school in East Woonsocket, named after one of Woonsocket's premier educators. I want the Greater Woonsocket Hall of Fame, which is housed in the main lobby of the high school, for thousands of you as they pass by the display each day. The Hall of Fame is located in an area where literally thousands of people, mostly students, proud by on a daily basis when school is in session and when special events are held in the auditorium or in the Severian Gym, named after one of Woonsocket High School's most successful athletes. I say shame on whoever made the decision to erase the crowded banking world and to move its contents to another site where, in all due respect, the Woonsocket Historical Society, which I am also a long time and proud member of, very few people visit or even know where it's located. The location was perfect in that it was located at a place that was easily accessible to students, scholars, and researchers alike. To conclude, I am strongly urging the Osaka School Committee to seriously reconsider the decision to eliminate the Crowley Bacon Room from Osaka High School where it rightfully belongs. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the speaker? George Lockyer, 1175 Diamond Hill Road. Uh, I have three things. One, uh, I know on your agenda is the hiring of uh, people. Uh, one of them is Emily Choquette Mandillo, who I've known since she's been a baby, uh, and I know she'll do a good job and give credit to the uh, school system. The other is a former student, uh, which I hope you're going to appoint Angie Holt. Angie, uh, was my Algebra two student here at the high school. Now, I have two stories. When I was working here, the superintendent at the time was Dr. Anthony Dacchioli. And One summer, we had a rash of openings. And Mike Capasso, Nancy Scambato, and myself, we interviewed 45 elementary that's a task I don't put on anyone. And most of them, believe it or not, were out-of-towners. And I said to Dr. Dacchioli, I said, you know, I've got some extra money. We had something called Title V. I said, how about we give these new teachers a tour of Woonsocket? Because since they were mostly elementary, they're not going to know what the different schools are or the community they are from. So the orientation was held here at the, it was held over at the old junior high. School bus picked them up and Dr. Dacchioli's job was to identify all the good restaurants in Woonsocket <laughs> and I was to do a little bit of the history of Woonsocket. So we left there and we toured the whole city and I'm not going to go through everything but you know they had to see more in Heinz. They had to see Social Street School. They had to go and see Bowdoin Boulevard. They had to go see Barry Field. All the things that some of us, especially you people, did take for granted. We finished at the Museum of Work and Culture, and we're getting off the bus, and one of the middle school teachers, who I know the family well, thanked us and said, do you know I've lived in Woonsocket all my life, and I didn't realize where some of the, these places were. Now that brings me to the Crowley Baker Room. When I was working here, I had a chance to spend a class with one of the teachers of Woonsocket history. I was flabbergasted how little I really knew about the history of Woonsocket. That is important to our young people and some of the people that are here to know what the history of the uh, city is. In fact, I just had to look up something on the Guerin Mills 
uh, today, and I found out stuff about the mills I had never known. Um, I was deeply upset when I found out that everything was moved rather quickly from upstairs. In fact, I visited upstairs uh, and went to talk to the clerk that was in there, and everything I knew that was in there was basically gone. The room had been raped, and everything had been removed, and I did not know where at the time. Um, no one has given a plausible reason why. I had heard it was because of structural, and I'm saying to myself that it was structural, they wouldn't really have to move the stuff, they just have to fix it. Uh, so, my point is that we've taken something away from the students and possibly other research, researchers because the historical society is open at, at a limited amount of time where this is open five days a week. I would hope that the school committee would reconsider and return the material to the uh, Moussaka, to the Moussaka room upstairs on the third floor. I, I thank you, and Mr. Perrier, have a nice vacation. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to address the school committee? Anyone else? We'll go on to recognitions and announcements. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I recently received a letter from Magistrate Angel Wallace, who is the, um, who's the magistrate that works with the Woonsocket Education Department, specifically the students and families um, who are um, Truman and have uh, poor attendance here in the district. And I'd like to share the um, the contents of this letter with the school committee. Um, I think this will show the committee um, and the community that um, the, uh, our attendance program and um, the supports that we provide our families and our students um, is working as we move forward here. It's dated July 15, 2019. Dear Dr. McGee, I write to share statistics of Rhode Island Family Court Truancy Program for the 2018-2019 school year. My statistics include information from the students who entered the program and whose cases I closed upon completion of one year in the truancy program. Unfortunately, although attendance officers filed other petitions against chronic truants, many children were referred to the formal calendar because even a parent, a child, or both did not comply with the requirements of the truancy program. As you can see from my statistics, which she shared with me on page two, uh, the children who completed the program greatly improved their attendance and grades. Attendance Chairman Roger Pickard was instrumental in the success of the program this year. He wore multiple hats, filling in for Andy Barnes, who retired. Mr. Lamoureux, uh, Kevin Lamoureux, also assisted the court and should be commended. I am pleased to hear that Mr. Barnes may be available to assist the school district next year. The guidance counselors at the middle school were present during every session. They, too, should be commended for their contribution to the success of the program. I look forward to working with you and your staff during the upcoming school year. Please feel, please feel free to share this letter with your staff and the school committee if you desire. So just some of the statistics that Magistrate Paula shared for me. Um, for example, there was one student who was absent 108 out of 152 days prior to his entrance um, to the uh, truancy court. Um, after um, the truancy court, he was absent 2 out of 100. His grades uh, dramatically increased from getting all Fs to two A's um, and a B. Another student um, prior to the uh, court involvement was absent 27 out of 97 days. Um, Post-court involvement was absent six out of 110 days. And two of those six days were actually excused days. Um, that student went from failing almost everything to getting three A's and a C. Another student was absent 63 out of 171 days. Um, Post-court involvement was absent only 23 out of 168 days. So th those are just some of the examples of 
the, um, the success that many of our students and our families are seeing um, as we re-enter the truancy court. Again, truancy court is not meant to be um, you know, any type of a situation where um, you know, children are, are put in a, a, a situation where there's um, you know, any, any, um, any situations where they're, they receive anything other than um, good service from a magistrate, uh, Paulus, and as, as well as um, the uh, counselors and administrators and teachers and attendance officers here in Socket. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Any comments from anyone? I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the recognitions and, and, and announcements. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next, we'll go on to approval of minutes for the open session minutes for July 17, 2019. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any changes or corrections? No. Dr. Dr. McGee, go for it. Chairman Bourget? Yes. Mrs. Dado? Abstain. Mrs. Kupiskis? Yes. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Does anyone, any, any school committee member, uh, would like to take any item out of order? Uh, yes, Chairman, would it be possible to take purchases and transfers, item number two, separately? Sure. Okay. Mrs. Kapiska. Um, simply because I want to indicate that I have to abstain, but I would like to be able to vote on the personnel issues. Okay, so we'll, we'll take the purchases out, so we will vote on that separately? Yes, please. Okay, other than the uh, purchases, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the consent, the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee, roll we'll call. Chairman Borges? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskis? Yes. Um, now for the purchases and transfers. Are there any uh, comments, questions about any of the items? I don't have a specific question. I just need to abstain because I'm a member of a board. Sure. Uh, Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Borgetti? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kapiskis? Abstain. Communications. Uh, Dr. McGee, employee handbook. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the committee is aware, and the community is aware, we recently welcomed uh, Ms. Mickey Fredericks to the Pensacola Education Department as our new Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations. And, and I've got to just say that she's only been here for about three weeks, um, and the, the amount of work um, that, that she has put in has been truly impressive. Um, tackling uh, issues that we've had uh, in the district for a number of years, she, she's uh, tackled them, um, she's spoken to people, she, she's met with people, uh, she, she's collaborated with really all of the directors, many of our administrators, and, and I just want to thank her uh, formally uh, for the hard work that she's put in to the Pensacola Education Department over the last three weeks. One of the tasks that she's undertaken and, and impressively has completed um, is a Pensacola Education uh, Department employee handbook for the 2019-2020 school year. You have that in your, uh, on your Chromebook notes and um, again this was, this was no small undertaking uh, by Ms. Fredericks um, but if you, if you have any questions with respect to the handbook um, she is here and, and I'm sure to answer any questions you may have. Um, this really is, is an opportunity for our for our new staff coming into the district to familiarize themselves with policies, procedures, knowing who to go to respect to administration and, and directors um, and, and again it's very impressive and it's something that we've been uh, hoping to, to have created over the last handful of years and, and again she came in and just really took control and as you can see I, I think you'll, you'll agree it's a very very impressive document that she's put together. Dr. McGee will this uh, handbook be given out to all the teachers in four years or is the it is so. Uh, right now, we're we're in the process and been in the process of hiring new employees, and as they come in and, and meet with the um, human resources staff, they receive uh, will be receiving this this handbook. 
those who have been appointed prior to, to your seeing this handbook will also receive a copy of this handbook as well. Thank you, Dr. Anybody else? Um, next, we'll go on to school subcommittee reports. Uh, the facility subcommittee uh, actually met yesterday, and we have our facilities update that's coming right after this. So I'm going to ask our director, Mr. Notori Nye, to cover both. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, as, as we stated, we met yesterday to um, provide an update on um, the facility's perspective. The Savin Savoy window boiler and entrance project um, is running on time and on schedule. We anticipate that the windows, front entrance, and the new boiler will be in place for the start of the school year um, with, with no issues. We also discussed the Kofia drainage project. Um, we have contractors on site looking at the drainage issues that we're experiencing between the um, playground and the pre-K wing at that elementary school. We currently have contractors working in the pre-K classrooms in the lower level of both here, getting the upgrades ready so we'll be compliant with the new um, old day pre-K that we're going to be running in that building. We have contractors that have assessed the Irish drainage issues from the back entrance where the playground is, and we anticipate having some um, work being performed there during the school year. The fee administration building is the Many was aware we uh, vacated the building earlier this year. Everyone's now been moved back into the building. The rooftop units have been installed and the system is up and running um, without any issues. And we are presently looking at our current HVAC vendor. Um, I think just if we start in this new position, it would be um, wise for us to take a look at the HVAC vendor and, and get a second opinion um, as to what other vendors perceive may or may not be issues here in the district. So we're currently exploring that as an option as well. From a custodial update, the summer cleaning projects are going well. Um, cleaning is progressing nicely. The building should be ready to open without an issue. I think they've been the cleanest I've seen in a long time. I've been in the district for several years. And finally, the transportation update. Um, in terms of bus routes, we're currently looking at bus routes in anticipation of the start of the school year, making adjustments as necessary. Those will be published in the local newspapers next week, as we normally do. And this year, is there's something new, students will be receiving bus passes so that they know um, where we're at. So all in all, um, from the facilities, custodial perspective, they're doing a great job. We're doing two thumbs up, doing an excellent job here in the district, and anticipate no issues with the stars. Thank you, Mr. Monteriani. The one thing I'd like to mention is that the library of the old uh, refurbishment is going very well, and that uh, was a combination of contributions by Lowe's, by the Rotary Club, by DRL Parking, and others. So that seems that that's going to be done within the week. I think on Saturday, the books are going to be brought back into, into the library and stacked with them. I think we've got volunteers, uh, several volunteers came in on Saturday. Yes, Jim, I did that. Yes, that came along to look at the library, which is fantastic. And yes, they're completely this weekend. Anyone else? I'll make a motion to receive and place on file the facilities update. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we'll move on to the technology update. Mr. Notorian. So, over the summer, we've done a lot of infrastructure updates, all the wireless access points throughout the buildings, which um, provide Wi Fi or internet access to all of our students' uh, devices. We're upgraded. We're currently upgrading the infrastructure, which is called switches at the elementary level. Provide an inventory of all devices here in the district to make sure our equipment's in place and we're ready for where we need it. At the high school, this is the launch here for the one-to-one -one initiative. So we're starting tomorrow night. Um, it's ninth grade orientation. I'm inviting all parents if you're listening. Please come on out. You're going to hear a lot of great things about Woonsocket High School. You also receive your child's promo tomorrow night. Um, so that's something that's exciting to start this year. And the last thing that's technology infrastructure is the Universal Student ID. So I alluded to it earlier. Our students have been received this year and the student ID that will allow them to access the cafeteria software, library software, it will be their bus pass, and allow them to scan in and out of the various systems here in the district. So that's something new for them, and they will have that from grades um, K through 12. I would imagine all that is all the ones that have been taken out. Yes, we, we could. Because that would be yep. a different situation as as the students come in and try to use that ID. Yes, we've tested it on all of our systems. In terms of state reporting and data, the 
2019 future evaluations have been uploaded, and the reporting has been completed. We roll all of our data systems forward. We're currently reviewing the configuration for the start of the school year. Staff and student counts are being created, and website updates have started, and those will continue for the next week and a half or so. That's all I have. Any comments from the members of the committee? Uh, I'll make a motion to receive on place and on file the technology update. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Next, I'll make a, a motion to discuss and approve the appointment of the Director of Curriculum and, and Development. Is there a second? Second. Dr. McGee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am extremely pleased to recommend Dr. Angela Holt for the position of Director of Curriculum and Development for the Woonsocket Education Department. Dr. Holt comes to the Woonsocket Education Department with over six years administrative experience in education. Most recently, she has worked as the head of school at the Hope Academy, where she assumed responsibilities with evaluating educators, differentiated instruction practices and strategic development, coordinated the consolidated resource plan submission and, develop, and, and the development of extended school year programming. Prior to her tenure at the Hope Academy, she worked for a combined total of 14 years in the Woonsocket Education Department as both principal, third grade teacher, third grade teacher, and was a graduate of Woonsocket High School. In addition to her career in the Woonsocket <coughs> Education Department, she worked in the Department of Education as an induction coach after being selected of one of 17 educators to participate in an innovative statewide teacher induction program. Dr. Holt earned her doctorate in educational leadership from Grand Canyon University and a license for school administration in Rhode Island. She's also earned a certificate of advanced graduate studies from Cambridge College in educational leadership and a master's degree in mathematics from Leslie University. Dr. Holt is a highly qualified uh, director of curriculum per the, per the um, Department of Education regulations. Based on Dr. Holt's education, work experience and commitment to the students of Woonsocket, I highly recommend her for the position of Director of Curriculum and Development in the Woonsocket Education Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Dr. McGee. Um, I can say that when Dr. Holt left the district, we were all sad. Uh, we wanted to chain you to, the, to a classroom or to your school. Uh, well, we're glad to see you and uh, come back. So uh, I think it's exciting. Anything else? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Borchett. Yes. Mrs. Nato. Yes. Mrs. Kabiskus. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. We're going to do several of these. 
Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20-2, medical supplies. Mr. Perrier. Uh, similar as the Stony supplies, we put out a bid First, for medical. Yes. I'm sorry. Motion, yes. Second. Mr. S similar to the custodial supplies, uh, we put out a bid for medical supplies for the district as well. Uh, they're stored in the nurse's office throughout the district. Uh, in this case, we had fewer bidders, is that correct? Yeah, that, that's correct. It's a little more specialized with the, uh, the medical supplies, so uh, I'm still, still happy that we had uh, the bidders that we had. Any comments, thoughts? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Portier? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kadiscus? Yes. I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20-3, high school serving hour. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Perrier? This, this is the odd one out. Uh, this is uh, a bid that we did to replace a uh, serving counter at the high school that went broken last year that we wanted to replace. Uh, the funding for this will be coming from our nutrition fund. Uh, we do have a surplus in there, so it's a fun balance that we're spending to purchase this item. Any comments? Dr. McGee, roll call. Chairman Boyce? Yes. Mrs. Nato? Yes. Mrs. Kibiscus? Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20 4 athletic supplies. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Perrier? Uh, 20 4 athletic supplies. Uh, these are for the uh, equipment that is needed for athletics for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, the, Mr. Giordano reviews these bids. Uh, we work together to look at the bids, uh, figure out what we need for the year coming up, and then uh, we put together this uh, presentation and this is the, the award of the bids that we're going to award. Mr. Perry, does this include all the teams from middle school? Is this just for high school or middle school? This is for all, anything and everything, all reaching across the entire district. We need some stuff in here. So that includes the new soccer team, I guess, that we're going to have this year? Uh, I believe we do have new uniforms for the upcoming year. Yes, uh, I'm getting confirmation that we do. Uh, that's going to be on uniforms on 20-06. Okay. Okay. Any thoughts? Dr. McGee. Chairman Borgia. Yes. Mrs. Nato. Yes. Mrs. Kubiscus. Yes. Next, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20-5, athletic medical supplies. There is a second. Mr. Perrier. Uh, we split out the regular medical supplies and the athletic medical supplies. Uh, again, this is for just for the sports teams, and uh, it's the medical supplies we need to get through the year. Obviously, it has to be enjoyed. Yeah, absolutely. If, 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 and if we come short anywhere here, we end up putting the other purchase order and, and buying what we need to get through the year. But, we actually reference these bids throughout the year, so if we go back, you know, in six months, we try to reference the bid and see if we can get, uh, obtain the same pricing. Right. And we should we'll be showing us any delta and the difference between where we are and where we need to go. Absolutely. Any thoughts? Dr. McGee. Chairman Borgia. Yes. Mrs. Nato. Yes. Mrs. Kibiscus. Yes. And finally, um, I'll make a motion to discuss and approve bid 20-6, athletic uniforms. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Mr. Perrier. Uh, uh, athletic uniforms, uh, same process as the previous five here. Uh, we bid them out, and uh, these are the bids that we got in. Any thoughts? Dr. McGee. Chair Borgia. Yes. Mrs. Nato. Yes. Mrs. Kibiscus. Yes. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 739. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.